So 32nd District, just for people who don't know, is uh, Shoreline, Woodway, part of Mount Lake Terrace, about half of Edmonds, all of Linwood, and part of Northwest Seattle. So it's a pretty urban district. Things I ran on were making sure that we invest in early learning for young kids. I was a public defender for 10 years, and so I just saw a lot of folks that have been through the system, whether that's foster care or the penal system or the jail system, and wound up homeless and uh, had some severe mental health disorders. And, and we're just coming back in the system all the time. And, and I looked at the interventions that are most cost-effective and do the most good. And what I learned is the brain science shows that, that the sooner you uh, support people, the better off. So children's brains develop to about 95% of their capacity by the age of five, and then our brains slow down in terms of our development. And I think that really reflects on the patterns that we start carrying throughout life. So if you can set kids up on the right path early in life, we do right by them. Right now, uh, a huge number of kids aren't kindergarten ready, so we're failing those kids. And, and so the governor is proposing a significant investment of over $100 million this year in boosting early learning. That's something that I, I'm going to support. I'm excited about that. I hear a lot also about environmental issues. That's just also something I've always been passionate about and want to work on. And that dovetails with what's going on with the orcas. Uh, we know that they will starve within a few years mm -hmm. if we don't change something. What we're trying to do, I'm, on, I'm the vice chair of uh, natural resources, water, agriculture, and parks. Uh, so on the natural resource front, what we're trying to do is get 50 million Chinook uh, salmon smolts uh, over and above what we already produce in our hatcheries, out into the ocean uh, so that orcas will have a crack at them. And the rest of us <laughs> after that, you know, orcas tend not to come too far south into Puget Sound. So, so once they get that far south, also, you know, fishers and stuff can, can look for them. We're going to have to make some investments there. But those are also really exciting opportunities to bring back some of the wildlife that we cherish. You know, our icons, everywhere you look in the Northwest, it's salmon and swarkas. And how can we justify that if we have allowed them to die off or caused them to become extinct? I just, I don't think that's right. I hear that a lot of the calls that we're getting from, from my district are about 100% uh, clean energy. Um, there's a bill to basically require that our utilities a couple decades in the future uh, be transitioned to 100% clean energy. Um, and I'm thinking solar and wind. We're going to need some technologies to come online to be able to store the energy uh, so that when there's peak demand, so for example, if the wind's not blowing, uh, but it's really hot out and people want to run their, run their air conditioners or their fans, they have to be able to access that energy. And that's been the challenge. Um, so we need to, to get better at storage. But, but that technology is rapidly coming along. So I think the bill phases in at about the right time. Uh, so people are excited about that. Also hearing a lot about gun issues, gun violence in schools, and people uh, wanting to see some kind of reasonable common sense regulation. You know, I do think that if you want a gun for hunting and you're a law-abiding citizen, that's, that's fine. But things do seem to be, you know, white hot in terms of the debate. And uh, I think we do need to look at some reasonable regulations. On Monday, we're going to be hearing a lot of bills around guns. For example, allowing only 10 rounds per clip for guns and a host of other things around uh, protecting domestic violence victims, which I think we should do. Democrats control all branches of government. In the House, there's a huge difference between the number of Democrats and Republicans. Uh, in the Senate, uh, obviously because of a smaller body, there's less of a difference, but there's a very significant difference, more so than we've had in many, many years. So there's this pent-up demand from sort of the d Democratic constituencies and what we call stakeholders, uh, interest groups. And that could be anywhere from labor to domestic violence advocates, but just everybody that works here in Olympia has these bills that, that they want to get through because and they know they have a chance now that the logjam is, is broken. And it's definitely been intense. And what I've been hearing from members who've been around a long time is Yes, it's not just intense because you're starting, it's also intense because this is just an intense session. We have a record number of bills already filed and ready to go. Um, you know, so I probably heard, I don't know, 10 or 15 bills today on different committees. Uh, but it's super exciting having constituents be the eyes and ears for me uh, so that I can know what's going on in their life and what's going on in our community uh, because I'm only one person with you know, two eyes, and, and uh, I will represent those those interests, and, and so I'm always interested in 
uh, hearing from folks. We've got great staff here. We have three staff members, which I'm blessed to, to have. Um, we've got John and Daniel and Aiden here, uh, and they do a great job, and they'll take your phone calls. And So hope to hear from you, and thank you so much for this opportunity to serve you.